You're hanging out with a couple of buddies. You're at some sort of, uh, what do you call it, a stag party, you know, stag. There's crazy stuff going on, it's crazy. There's a clown on fire in the corner. People are going, thank goodness, about time for those clowns, right? Some other guy over there, he's riding a horse. And by riding a horse, I mean he's riding a horse. And uh, buddy, a buddy of yours just finished a, a drinking can of Coke. He just finished a can. Say, let me try a little illusion for you, a little illusion, something that's going to freak your brain, kind of get your mind all fried like an egg. I'm going to try that right about now. You say, look, I'm going to have my brother here, Christopher. Chris, uh, you got a dime? You got a dime on you? Yeah. I'm going to give you a marker here. I don't want you to take the marker. I want you to put a uh, fresh mark of the devil, not the 666, something that to you connotes, suggests, expresses some kind of Beelzebubian, underlord, destroyer of human souls kind of thing. Okay. okay, what's we got here? Let's take a little look here. I'm gonna look at this. What do I got here? It looks like the end of the world. He did a good job. He's got some sort of mark on there. I don't know if you want to close it on in that kind of thing. He put a mark on there like that. Now, the reason I asked to borrow a dime in this particular instance, okay, is I don't know if you know this, but when it comes to soda pop cans, most coins, quarters, dollars, they don't fit inside. But a dime will actually fit right in the, right in the time. You can put it right in there, okay? Keep an eye on that. Along with that, we're going to use, what do I got here? I got, actually, I got a coin that won't fit inside. So we got Christopher's coin inside, and I got what's called a, a loony. It's way too, I want you to see this, way too big to fit inside. But luckily, I got a magic wand. Got it in my pocket right here. Here it is, my magic wand. It's uh, some keys. Look, look at this, look at this. Just like this. I just say the magic phrase, the destroy of human souls is quite a clever son of a bitch. And just like that, look, 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 look. Impossibly, inexplicably, there's Chris's mocked end of the world coin. But listen, inside, inside the can, let me get his key here. Luckily, I'm going to, inside, one coin, the dollar. Because this here trick involves a uh, possibility of cutting yourself. My lawyer gave me a note, I'm supposed to say it here on YouTube, uh, here it is anyway. Uh, to all the observers of this here videotape, if anybody at any point happens to, to try this here trick and cut themselves badly or even not so badly, it's absolutely none of Jay Sankey's fault. You're big boys and girls, you guys gotta figure it out yourselves. Get a Coke can. What you're going to do is make a slit in this can. Now, I am going to warn you, all kidding aside, <laughs> be careful. It's easy to slit your hand open on this. So if you're a younger person, say you want to perform this trick, you're very young. You're four, you're two, you're in vitro. And you want to really wow the inner lining. If you want to do that, be very careful. You might want some help with this. I'm going to make a little cut. Now notice, this trick is designed to fool the eyes, but also the ears. The moment I put their coin, their mark coin in the can, I'm using a subterfuge, a ruse, a con. And it's designed to fool the ear. I'm going to be switching in the larger coin. But if I put the slit, I'm going to make a slit in the can, a secret slit. If I put it up here, when the coin falls, it's going to make a big, loud sound, much bigger than a dime, right? So I have to be careful here. So I'm going to actually get, and you can do this, I have done this on the fly in a bathroom or whatever in a, uh, a garbage bin, uh, you can do it with the side of a key, okay? But it is definitely easier to do this start, at least, with a packing knife or something like that. So I'm gonna take it, and I'll show you in just a second. I'm gonna make, and I'm gonna make sure the slit is not clean. It's gonna be jagged. I want it to be jagged. I'm gonna make it, let's say, about that big. So there's the slit, and notice, I'm going to be using a Canadian, you know, if you use a U.S. half dollar, a lot of magicians use half dollars. So this is great, or you can use a quarter, because a quarter won't fit through the top of a soda can either, okay? Quarter will also won't sound as heavy, so it's up to you. But this is my secret preparation. I've got a jagged cut, and it's only about, what is it, an inch and a half off the bottom here. I'm going to take the coin. I'm going to work it, and you don't have to cut it. The last quarter of an inch of this will actually tear when I push this inside, okay? So I'm going to force this in, okay, about and let it sit about there. So I want you to see, it's on an angle, okay? It's stuck in the back of the can. And in fact, 
this is sitting on the table, okay? And I just have to grab when I'm, I'm gonna hold this from the back here with my fingers and give this a shake. I love this action. If you have a can of soda, you grab it off a, a, a off, and you know, you can prepare this and have it over in the corner at a party or again, the work lunchroom or somewhere where you normally perform. As soon as you do this action, you're doing two things. First, you're showing nothing's in your hands. Doing a couple of things actually. Nothing's in my hands, number one. Number two, the can looks totally untampered with, which is great. And number three, this action of shaking out the last couple of drops is totally natural, okay? Then this goes down the table, but I've got my coin set up. So that's my secret setup of the can. For this, you also need a matching coin for whatever you're gonna load in. It could be a quarter, in this case, I'm using a Canadian dollar coin, okay? Got my matching coin, and I'm gonna uh, put this in my left pants pocket, okay? Obviously, I don't need this during the performance unless the audience is really rough. Gonna have a marker. You don't have to have this marked. People can note the date to make sure it's the same one, but there is a lot to be said. I always like, I mean, having somebody, frankly, whenever I have somebody mark something this small with this, there's always an awkward motion sometimes to get ink on their hand. There's lots of comedy in there for sure. And then I use my keys. I use my keys because it's a great way to cut at the end because they're so organic too. And they use them as a magic wand for perfect pocket management. So there's my setup, okay? So I start with a Coke can, maybe you do the shake, whatever you want like this, have someone mark a dime. And I, so someone marks a dime, we'll put a big X on here like this. They've marked a dime, okay? And now, when you lift this up, you're gonna comment on the fact that the thing about a dime is unlike uh, other coins, a dime will fit inside. You can see it fits inside. And I gesture here, and I'm gonna take it and apparently put it into the can. And boy, I mean that looks, I had it one moment here, Sort of here, I relax down on my side, I come back up and this larger action covers. And this, I mean, that looks so good. And all I'm doing is I'm taking this dime and I'm rolling my finger and I'm putting it in what's called a thumb palm. I'm sure you guys have been loyal to the channel here, know this move by now. Goes into the thumb palm and just my thumb and finger, sort of an exaggerated way, separate and boy, it looks good. The only thing that's suspicious, of course, it would look great maybe if you're performing for deaf people, but at this point, there's a noticeable lack of sound. So my left thumb is gonna push down on that coin at the same time. And I think everyone will agree that this, I mean, that is a beautiful illusion, boom, okay? And don't worry if the quarter, I'm using a dollar, of course, but if your quarter sounds a little bit heavier than a dime, I mean, we're here in the studio, it's silent. I've never been caught once, not even on a raised eyebrow, okay? So you get this beautiful illusion of absolutely putting a mark coin in the can. So that's step one. Step two, I go to my pockets, okay, and I grab my duplicate dollar coin or quarter, in this, if you're going to use a quarter, right? And I'm going to use something called Bobo Switch. It's a very basic slide. This is, for those of you who are interested in inside deception and learning that next level sleight of hand stuff, this is what I'd call a totally beginner level. There's several other levels of sleight of hand, okay, on top of this one. But here, I'm apparently going to throw the coin into my hand. What I do is I switch the two, and it's not a hard move, and this is a very functional kind of slight. I throw it once to establish a pattern for people. You don't want to do it four or five times. People start thinking you have some sort of Tourette's issue, which probably is a misapplied of a medical term. Thank you, Jay Sankey, trademark and copyright, 19, 1921. So here, you do it once. On the second time, I'm going to throw the coin from there into there, and basically with a thumb and finger, push this coin back behind the fingers. The switch looks great because it's a large action. There's the dime. I'm going to switch the dime for the dollar. And because I've already let them know, I actually have a magic wand in my pocket. No, no, seriously, ma'am, it's a magic wand. When I uh, take this out, I do the switch. I go right to my pocket for the keys. And this is one of these situations where, again, you are so far ahead. They saw the dime go in. They heard the dime go in. They saw the dollar. They see your hands are empty. probably the most clunky magic wand in the universe. Open your hands and watch people vomit because ridiculously, there's the coin that was safely in there, okay? You then pick this up, cover the cut with your thumb or fingers, okay? And shake. I mean, look how fair, there's, there's, there's nothing, there's nothing to see, but they can hear something inside. And I'll often even say, I think you'll agree that sounds a bit heavier. And I emphasize that line, okay? Then I take the key, and from the back here, I'm going to reach inside, I'm going to cut, and I just cut, 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 and you please be very careful. Jam it in there, cut, cut, cut like this, and then spill out the coin. He's got that sense of humor where he 
you serious? Yeah, bro, I can really tell he's joking around. He better be joking. Um, so I think that Jay Sankey is probably one of the best uh, people to learn your magic skills from.